Alright, let's say you're making a React app. Maybe not unlike this beautiful React app I have over here. And you want to add some styling to it. You want to add some CSS to it to make it look nice and pretty for your end users. So I'm going to go over some of the most popular ways to add styles to your React app and kind of tell you my opinion on what you should use in order to style your React app. So the most basic thing you can do is just do the normal CSS way. Just import a, a big CSS file into your document and use it like you would a normal CSS document. So I, as you can see here, I have a CSS file with some padding and a class right here. And so in order to use this inside React, you would just yeah import this in right here. As long as you have Webpack configured correctly or you're using create React app, then you can just uh, have the styles work immediately. Let's add this class name right here. And now we're getting the styles that we see in this right here. So obviously this works. It's been working for decades. But I don't really like working with giant CSS files, especially in React. Because the problem with these giant CSS files is if you have a React project of any kind of size, it's probably going to end up being thousands of lines long and it just turns into a gigantic mess and you're not sure what selectors are still being used like maybe you took this one component out of your application but you forgot to remove the CSS so maybe you just have some random CSS that isn't even being used so this is not exactly the best way to write CSS in React. So instead of just using a giant global CSS file, you can use CSS modules to locally scope CSS inside your application. So in React, it's useful to locally scope your CSS because another problem with having this giant CSS sheet is sometimes you'll run into conflicts, uh, like maybe you want your paragraph tags in one element to display differently from paragraph tags in another element, and it's just causing conflicts and it can be kind of a headache, like if I said if you have a thousand line CSS file. So local scoping can really help with that. So what you can do is, let me open up this CSS modules. This is a pretty similar syntax to what I showed you before, but instead of just importing the CSS file, we're importing styles from CSS modules.module.css. You don't have to name it like this. This is just a naming convention for these modules. But let me open up this. So we have this uh, primary in here with the color of blue violet. And let me show you how the local scoping works. So the syntax for this is a little bit different. Instead of just uh, putting the primary as the class name, you'll take the styles variable or the styles object and get the primary class from it. So each of these can be selected like an object. And now you put in styles.primary and then it will display with this. Now the nice thing about CSS modules is that they're locally scoped, like I said, and they do that by assigning a unique class name to each of these. So if you actually look up the source code to this, it's not actually going to be just a primary as a class name. It's going to be a unique class name so that only this item is affected and not anything else on the page. So let me just kind of show you how that works by importing this in here. And then we now have a React component using CSS modules. And if you pop open the developer tools right here, then you'll see that this actually has a, a unique class name. It's not primary like this other one. It's CSS modules underscore primary and then some gibberish, just so it's completely unique from anything else. So that's how we can have another class name of primary, but it's completely unaffected by our styles in this component. So we can kind of keep all of our styles inside each of their own little boxes so they don't conflict with each other. So that's already a much better way to do that. And if I were to use this approach, I'd probably create a new module.css for each and every component and then put the relevant styles that I want in there. But there are actually better ways to do it now. So another really popular way that has come across that has come about recently is using styled components or or CSS and JS as a lot of people call it. And there's a few different libraries for this. I personally prefer using styled components, but there's also emotion and the syntax is pretty similar. So let me just show you how this works. 
So styled components solves a few problems that CSS modules doesn't. So maybe in CSS modules you'll have to reuse some classes, maybe you'll have to copy and paste some from a different module into this module, and it can be kind of confusing like where each of these class names are is not immediately obvious. Uh, you'd have to do a lot of looking it up. So th these styled components, they use the React philosophy, which is break everything down into small reusable chunks that you can just uh, use many times. And it carries that philosophy over to CSS as well. So let's say I have this style div, and maybe I want to use this in multiple places in my application. I want to be able to use this in many different locations. And the nice part about this is you can write uh, just CSS like you normally do. So you can write the normal syntax right here, and you can use media queries, and you can also nest things like you would in SAS or something like that. So I can nest a paragraph tag inside here. If I want to, I can nest a media query in here. Max width 768 pixels, something like that. And yeah, it just allows really natural CSS writing like you're used to. And then you can also pass in props here uh, so that you can, maybe you want to change the color uh, in different locations in your application. Sometimes you want it to be black, sometimes you want it to be a different color. So you can actually pass in props to this styled component. Let's say the color black. And then using these props, you can just grab that prop right here. And it's a really great way to make these reusable CSS components in React. So obviously you can make styled components of anything. This is just a div, but I can also make this a paragraph tag, an anchor tag, or even another component in here if I wanted to. So they're very flexible. And this is honestly what I would recommend if you're just starting out with styling things in React. This is going to be um, the most straightforward to learn, and it's probably one of the most widely used libraries right now. So yeah, this is styled components, and there's also the library emotion which is very similar and they have very similar performance as well so it's just pick your favorite one pick whichever one you learn first basically so besides css and js we also have utility libraries like tailwind css which if you haven't heard of tailwind css the idea is basically instead of writing your own css um, and continually writing the same things like padding uh, color, text size, margin. Instead of writing all that, we can just use these uh, small utility classes like this. Uh, for example, this PT1 is like padding top of 1. This is margin top of 6. And so basically, uh, it just uses these small little utility classes to really make writing CSS quicker. So instead of putting all the margin and padding and text size and text color myself, I can just put all these classes in here and once you learn them it's a lot easier to work with. So let me import that into here. And so yeah we now have this uh, text 5XL so this large text right here and then this text base with uh, the text color of gray, we have some margin and padding on top. And that's a very easy way to write some CSS, as you can see. Now this might not be the most React friendly way to write this. As you can see, maybe you don't want to copy and paste these attributes every single time that you want to use them. Maybe you want to use reusable components like I was talking about with styled components. Obviously that fits the React philosophy a lot better creating reusable components that you can just use many times. So there's actually a library that uh, is pretty similar to styled components that works with Tailwind. And we can import TW from twin.macro. So yeah, you'd install this library right here, twin.macro. And we can also import styled from this as well so that we can write in a similar syntax to uh, this style components and if you want to learn more about style components I have a whole other video on this that you can check out but uh, I'm just going over the basics today but if we want to create something similar to style components with Tailwind 
we can take out these from twin.macro and then we can create a component right here. Let's say that we want to make something const big text. We want to make this header reusable. So let's say we want this to be a styled.h1 backticks. And then you can write normal CSS in here like you would with uh, styled components. But you can also use tailwind inside here as well. So let's use dollar sign bracket syntax. Then you can put tw backtick backtick. And then we can actually put in these classes right here. So put in those. And then, yeah, this is basically equivalent to this right here. So let's change this a bit. Instead of h1, let's just say big text. And then tailwind. And save that. And then, yeah, we get exactly the same as we have here. So this is a nice way to make reusable tailwind components. And I think it's a lot nicer if you're just trying to uh, get something off the ground quick. You don't really want to go over writing all the CSS and make it look completely unique to your own website. If you just want some like helper classes just to get started, I'd recommend learning Tailwind. It's pretty useful. So one last thing is that CSS in JS is not exactly the most uh, performance friendly because JavaScript is inherently slower to load and process than HTML or CSS. So the problem with CSS in JavaScript is just that it's going to be slower to load than like CSS that you just import into a file. So maybe you're willing to compromise on that, but you don't actually have to. There are these libraries right here. Uh, these are just a couple of them. There's a few more, but this compiled library and Linaria. So the idea behind these is it actually takes all your CSS in JavaScript and whenever you build it, it kind of takes it out and creates a separate CSS file that then just imports it like a normal CSS file. But then you're only using the CSS that you're actually using in that page and nothing else. You're not just importing this giant CSS file full of classes that you don't actually use on that page. So it's going to be a lot better than just importing normal CSS. Kind of funny how we've gone full circle though and we're just importing CSS, static CSS again. But this is probably the best performance friendly way to do it so that you're not loading it through JavaScript and having to process even more JavaScript, which obviously slows your website down and the less JavaScript, the better, honestly. But yeah, this Linaria and Compiled are good. They, they do take a little bit more to set up than just something like styled components. With Linaria, you have to set up it with Webpack a bit. And so I want to make a tutorial on these. I'll kind of make them simple to set up. Because when you're making a React app, you really shouldn't be putting performance second. I know it's fun to use all these cool new technologies, but at the end of the day, the users just want like a fast loading website, you know? They don't want to be waiting just because you were too lazy and just wanted to use some cool new technology. So yeah, I recommend looking into these and I'll probably make a video on these soon. But yeah, that's basically a crash course on how to get started with styling inside your React app. If you don't know anything about this, I'd probably just start with styled components. Check out my video that I've done on this before. And then if you're interested in some of these, you can check out Tailwind or one of these static CSS uh, libraries like these.